when I was a little boy, one of my favorite toys was an erector set. Erector sets were a collection of steel girders, bolts, nuts, screws, motors, metal panels, with a lot of holes in them that you could connect things together and build all kinds of other stuff. And as a kid, I enjoyed building things, which I think most kids enjoy building things. We grow up with blocks and Legos and Tinker Toys and Lincoln Logs and learn to build all kinds of things. We're fascinated with creating things. We might be fascinated with simply drawing things or painting things. And we like to watch things being built. We have a lot of hobbies and crafts. And most of those hobbies and crafts in our lives revolve around the creation of something, whether it's artwork or woodworking, quilting or sewing, pottery. And then there's shows on the Discovery Channel where we can look at how things are built. We're fascinated by things being made. Well, creating software is no different. Software is a is created in a process of just simply assembling things, much like a house is assembled. So the process of software development is similar to building a house. Now there's lots of stages in building a house, and the first stage is the planning stage. In this stage, the architect meets with the homeowner and figures out what they want the home to look like and what the needs are and what the floor plan should be, and he designs the house to meet those needs and the wishes of the client. Then comes the interface development stage. Now this isn't an architectural term, this is a, a programming term. We're going to talk about building an interface, how the user works with our application. That's the interface. But in designing a house or building a house, there's an interface that's developed. How are the living quarters going to be arranged and how are they going to function for the comfort of the homeowner? Now that living area is created by assembling and modifying existing building materials. We use lumber, we use outlets, we use electrical cables, all kinds of plumbing fixtures and pipes, insulation, vents, vent work. All those materials are dropped off the building site and the, the contractor simply assembles them and modifies, in the case of lumber, maybe making some cuts so that things fit together. Developing the interface in software is done much the same way. We work with existing objects. It's not enough just to put these objects together, but everything has to be in a working fashion. They have to be connected correctly. And in the building industry, there's all kinds of codes that one has to follow to make sure that things are put together correctly and that they work efficiently and effectively and safely. So we have a plumber come in and connect all the pipe work, or an electrician come in and connect all of the electrical work, the outlets to the fuse box, and so forth. That's the coding stage, again, a programming term. Once that is coded and we have the interface developed, we then enter the testing and debugging stage. And this is where we look for problems. We want to make sure our application works the way it should. In a home building situation, there's a walkthrough with the final owner. The homeowner comes through and looks for things that are not quite done correctly or not that need to be fixed, um, such as maybe some paint missing somewhere or paint drips someplace, or maybe a light switch doesn't work. And those things are noted on a punch sheet and the corrections are made. And that's the testing and debugging stage that we would do in the programming environment. Then there's the deployment stage. This is where the homeowner actually takes possession and moves in. The house is finished. It's livable. And most importantly for the builder, the builder gets paid. So here's, again, the five stages that we go through in building a house. Now, these, again, are architectural terms. These are programming terms. So we're going to see how they relate. There's a planning stage, the interface development stage, the coding stage, the testing and debugging stage, and the deployment stage. So let's look at how software is developed. The planning stage in software development is where the developer or the software engineer or a team of engineers or developers meet with the client and figure out what does this application need to do? What are the features that it needs to have? What should it look like? That's all part of the planning stage. 
Then there's the interface development stage. We're actually building the application, how it looks and feels. And we're doing that by assembling objects together, or sometimes referred to as controls. So we might have a button that says go on it, then we click, it does something. That's the interface. Once that interface is developed, we then have to code it. We have to connect those objects to one another and make them do something. And this is where the programming language comes into place. We might be able to program something in Visual Basic or in C Sharp, and in, using Microsoft Visual Studio, the interface may look identical, but the, the program that's used, whether it be VB, Visual Basic, or C Sharp, will differ. And so we're going to use a particular language to connect all these objects and make them function. And then, of course, the testing and debugging stage. And yes, you may feel like this guy in the photo sometimes. And even the most professional, experienced programmers and developers have problems and bugs in their programs from time to time. And they have to go through the stage and figure out why things don't work. And sometimes it can be something as simple as a comma missing or some word misspelled. It is a necessary process to go through. We find those bugs or the mistakes in our program, which may be syntactical mistakes where we mistyped something, or maybe logical mistakes where we added something when we should have multiplied something. So we weren't thinking correctly in terms of how we, we coded this. In that testing stage, we're going to find those errors and then we're going to fix them. And that may go through several cycles. You may fix the errors, and then you test, and you find another error. Then you fix that error. And then you test again, and you find another error. And you may, at, through the testing and debugging stage, decide you need to go back to the interface stage and change the interface. Maybe you want to add some new features. And that, in turn, is going to require you to do some more coding. So this interface development, coding, and testing, debugging, it really is a cyclical process as you go through these three things in, in order. Finally, when the application's all done, it seems like everything works, there's a deployment stage. We're putting our application on a user's machine and letting them use it and work with it, hopefully meeting their needs. And, of course, we as the developers are getting paid for our hard work. So, again, the five stages, planning, interface development, coding, testing and debugging, and deployment. The planning stage is extremely important. The more time you spend planning, the less time you'll probably have to do with the interface development, the coding stage, and the testing and debugging. So don't bypass that planning stage. We'll talk more about that in another video.